Hi, Jason and Shelly Martinkus here for another Kitchen Conversation. Uh, it's been a while since we posted, but we wanted to get back at it and address some more of the key questions that were asked over and over again. And this one is about trust building. So uh, very consistently we're asked the question, uh, how does trust get rebuilt? Or we hear, you know, how can I ever trust him again? Or how can I ever trust her again? And uh, it seems like it's a rhetorical question because it's such an enormous thing, like this idea that trust is gone and that it'll ever come back. But uh, it, is, it is possible. And uh, the process of rebuilding trust is one that, that takes diligence, time, effort, um, specific and intentional actions to do. So we just want to address that a little bit. So Shelly, I'll let you start. Um, when you think about our earliest days uh, in the recovery process, you know, what did it take to start trusting me again? Well, before I answer that, I think mm -hmm. that you know, as you're talking, it was really uncomfortable to not trust you. I think naturally I, I want to trust people and so that was super uncomfortable for me to to realize I couldn't trust you yeah. you know um, yeah because you're trusting by nature right yeah. right so I think about maybe six months in ish to our process I got but so for the first six months I would just say that I just was like yep I don't trust him even when you would do something that at face value seemed legitimate. I was like, nope, not trusting him, you know. Yeah. But I would say maybe six months into our process, I came to a place of just realizing that really I could only trust God and I couldn't trust you at that point. And further, in addition to that, um, that I would be okay no matter what, as long as I had God, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, I realized, you know, in the end, I may not have you, I may not have, you know, our house or whatever else, friends, but as long as I had God, that I would be okay. Yeah. And so really just, that was a huge part of my journey initially was putting my trust and faith in God and not in you. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. And I think the same was true for me, you know, in those, in those early days, it was like, I kept worrying, you know, moment to moment, day to day, like from between breakfast and lunch, like, is my marriage going to make it? Mm -hmm. Will you still be around, you know, when I get home from work today? So it was touch and go, and it was every day, it was a question mark, and there came that point where I, I sort of had to surrender that and say, okay, I've got to do the right thing. I've got to do the next right thing that God is calling me to, and if that builds trust, awesome, that's a, that's a bonus, yeah. and if you're still there at the end of the day, that's awesome, that's a bonus but I have to live the way God is calling me to live mm -hmm. and trust him for the outcome of trust being restored, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Which is really hard because there's no measurable progress in the beginning. It feels like it's just this, this nebulous, maybe someday somehow she'll trust me again. And instead what you start to see is over time, with consistency, trust starts to come back. I bet that was hard when you're not getting any positive feedback from me. You know what I mean? Totally. And I hear that all the time from guys in my office. Like, look, I'm doing the right thing. I'm saying the right thing. I'm present with my emotions, but she doesn't buy it mm -hmm. at all. And it's like, yep, par for the course. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so let's talk about a couple of practical things. Okay. Right? So just kind of thinking, okay, what built trust at our house during this uh, during this journey? And there were some... some um, some little things and some big things, and the little things added up over time. And so a couple of those for me, one was um, being accountable for my time and for my money, right? For our money. Mm -hmm. Like being able to say, this is where I am, this is what I'm doing, and actually being where I said I was going to be and doing what I said I was going to do with who I said I was going to do it with right. over and over and over again. That seemed to build trust. And then uh, being accountable for our money, like actually being able to pin down to the penny Here's where the money went that I spent was trust building as well. And, and even today, if you look at my wall today, I have like two bucks in there because here we are almost a decade later and I learned to put everything on a credit card so that there would be a record of it. As well yeah. as didn't you keep a journal? I mean, you did. Right. I kept a 30 minute journal that said, here's where I am, here's what I'm doing every half hour, which, you know, I tell guys to do that in my, my office and the wives will say, well, how can I trust anything on there? And the reality is she can't. But the consistency of seeing him go over and above to keep this tedious journal yeah. can start to build trust. Right. 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 So, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, two things that come to mind. One is um, just 
before disclosure, I just remember needing to get something out of your wallet and you panicking. And that happened more than once. Oh, yeah. And then <laughs> at some point into our recovery, as you were rebuilding trust, I remember just needing something out of your wallet and you're like, go ahead, anytime, you look, whenever you want. And I was just like, opening up your wallet and... <laughs> But it, that was a huge thing for me that you, you know what I mean? It was. Surrendered that. Yeah, surrendered that freedom and that right to privacy. Like so many guys struggle with that. Like, well, this is my stuff and it's my gym bag and my mm -hmm. safe and uh, we got to surrender all that. Our right to that privacy is gone. Right. Mm -hmm. I think another big thing for me was the five minute rule, just that I could call you and I knew that you would either answer or call back within five minutes or I would expect that the worst had happened. Right. And so that was, you know, I just think that was really big for me mm -hmm. just to know that you, because I know that took a lot of um, work and was a sacrifice for you once again. Yeah. And so the fact that you, um, yeah, just went above and beyond, I thought, oh, he really means this, mm -hmm. you know? Felt yeah. Sick. You know, I tell guys in my office all the time and in every man's battle, like, Trust is destroyed at our wives' expense. Trust is rebuilt at our expense. Like it is mm -hmm. going to cost us to rebuild trust in our marriage. Um, and you know that exercise five minute rule. I think what was so important about that for me personally was it forced me to decide what my priorities are. Will I serve me and have my freedom and am I entitled to my time, or will I serve you and put everything else second to your phone call? which I did. There was one important meeting with my boss and a vice president and another guy. Uh -huh. And I answered that call right square in the middle of that meeting. And they looked at me funny. But at the end of the day, it's like, my wife's phone call is way more important than you guys. You right? Know? So. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so there's one more thing I wanted to say. Okay, go. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, I think a lot of times whenever I'm asked, especially by women, you know, do you trust Jason today? Do you trust him? And my response, and so what I want to communicate to anyone listening, is that trust, I do trust Jason today, and I'm so thankful for that, Me that too. I can sit here today and say that. Um, number two, that trust, it does look different, though. My trust with Jason is not a naive trust. It's a real trust, and it's something that you have earned. And so it's, um, it's really special, and it's different. Um, so... Yeah. yeah, I think that's... And that's not to say that there aren't times today when that comes into question. Like, there are still conversations we have to have about, you know, am I living my life in a trustworthy way? And sure. that's okay. Every yeah. time we get to have that conversation, we get to kind of reconfirm where we are with that. Yeah. yeah. All right, what about you? Anything else? Uh, yeah, one last thing. So this is my shameless plug for um, my first book called Worthy Ever Trust. And um, that book is really all the things that I did wrong in the process and learned from. <laughs> as well as all the things that I coach guys to do right in my office and at every man's battle. Um, and then there's a, a several sections from Shelly in there just with her added perspective on it. So this is kind of a how-to practical guide for, for guys to build trust. And if you're interested in, in buying the book, um, you can do that at worthyofhertrust.com and that will take you to a place on my website where you can buy it. So hopefully that's helpful to you. And thanks for joining us for a, another Kitchen Conversation. <laughs>